time is it? Quarter to five in the morning, 4.45. I'm leaving my, the campsite that I was at and that I've been at for a couple of nights and I'm going to meet John who I was with yesterday and he's going to take me out on his boat. I'm going to try and uh, do some potting and go and grab some pots he's had out. So I'll bring you along and show you how he does it. <laughs> it's early, it's early doors. But let's see if there's something in their pots. It's like my first day at school, waiting to be picked up. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> John's just going to pick me up from this pontoon. <coughs> it's early doors, about six o'clock now. But I feel fresh. Not been slurping. I was a good boy last night. Just had uh, just had one pint with my dinner. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna wait for John to pick me up from this little jetty, and then we're gonna go out and we're gonna check his pots um, and see if we can't get some uh, some lobsters, which would be good where the man is the only natural predator of a lobster so let's go and predator some lobsters there he is lucky <laughs> salut there's a thing going on Sam, oh, yeah. safety first safety first ladies and gentlemen because this is what it's all about safety first yeah. you put it all over my jacket Yeah, look, safety first, wrap it before you slap it. Yeah, at least we look like we know what we're doing. <laughs> like you do know what you're doing. Let's go. Come a good side. Yeah, oh yeah, well, your, your backside, mate, that's the best side. Believe it or not, see this, there's a lighthouse. There's a lighthouse there. That's just the lighthouse from Fraggle Rock, apparently. I'll get you closer to it. He's going to get us closer to the actual lighthouse from Fraggle Rock. And if you don't know what Fraggle Rock is, I'll put a picture of a few fraggles on there. Looks a bit choppy. Here we are, look. For anyone who can remember, this is fr the lighthouse from Fraggle Rock. What's that noise? That's a foghorn. That's what I was hearing last night when I was camping. And it's automated apparently, John says there's no one living in it, is there? No. No fraggles in it anymore. No lighthouses are mad lighthouses are going wrong. Controlled from like one central area. All controlled from a little hub somewhere. You it can will. tell that's horrible stuff in there, and you don't want to be going over there. This is called Shag Rock. And this is called Shag Rock. I don't know why I would like that, but it's just called Shag Rock. <laughs> I'd like to say there's some really interesting saucy story behind it because it's usually got shags on it. What's a shag? Shag's a type of cormorant. It's a type of cormorant. It's, it's a not cormorant. It looks exactly like a cormorant apart from it's got like a little quiff on the top. That's good to know mate. That's good to know. I didn't know. Learning as I go. What's that then? That's just a cormorant then. A cormorant. Shag rock, yeah, fraggle rock. Next to each other, cormorant. There you go. Cormorants have often got like a bit of white on them. Or the shag will be completely black, it'll have a yellow beak and a green eye. You, so all them things in Whitby that I've been saying, oh, it's a corn it could be just a shag. Ah. My life's been a lie, all jokes I could have had growing up. Hey, up shag that. <laughs> anyway, shag that bird. Well, that's shag and that's fraggle rock, so fraggles and shagging, let's go. Don't call it mowed up or anchored up, we've just stopped. That's what we call it, the nautical term, we've just stopped. We're drifting actually, John said. Whoa, don't drop camera over that other side. Right, let me get out of your way. We're going to troll a couple of lures. Thirty-six foot of water. Look, oh, I'd quite like to get in, dive. I should have brought some of my, my goggles and that. Doing some underwater filming when you're pulling it big bass. Right, and he's going through. What lure have you got on there? This. 
for all these for all the fishermen. Is a sidewinder Skerry's Candy King. Candy King, because he's got a little candy the colours on it. The make is sidewinder, the model is a Skerry's and the colour is a Candy King. And there you go. Let's see if you can get us a bass. Why wouldn't a bass want that? I kind of want it. So we're just going to trawl these two rods with our squidgy, whatever they're called, squidgy pirates or whatever they are, and then hopefully get one. We're just going to trawl by this coast. It's exciting, isn't it, folks? This isn't your usual wild camping up a mountain, look. Out on a boat with the main man, fish locker, doing a bit. Early morning doing a bit as well. I had to get up at half four just to pack my tent away and get out at the campsite. Look at these little caves everywhere as well. Yeah. Fish on. He's having a look, isn't he? He's going for it. He's going for it. No, he won't. Yeah. Will he? Yeah. Oh my god, it's all happening. It's all happening aboard the Fish Locker Express. He's got a fish on. It's only a little. What is it, little bass? Can I just say, I said I was surprised we had that at the school, like. Yeah, as soon as you said it. Oh, they're stunning fish, though, aren't they? On your... On the little rainbow warrior. Oh, going for the seal. Hey, up! Oh, That's a snag, is it? Yeah, it was. It's a different snag. Didn't know you were a fisherman. Yeah, yeah, I am a little bit. I'm from fishing stock. You know all the terms and everything. Snag, I said there. I did a bit of research before I came. It's only a little in. Oh, only a little in. Target species. That's it. School bass, you say. Yeah, we'll go and get his granddad now. Oh, yes. Healthy. Yeah, he's a straight away look yeah. That's sealed, there we are, first fish of the day, yeah. It's just uh, straight into yeah, out of frying pan into fire. John's just bringing up his first fleet of pots. He's going to show us what's in there, if anything's in there. Fingers crossed. A small edible. Couple of little, uh, little browns. What's for bait? What do you use for bait in there? Just stored fish carcasses. Oh, shite, yeah. Like if you bring them, catch any pollock. Those all the heads in the carcasses. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Why can you smell it? Stinks, mate, yeah. Another brown, and what's them? White things. Inside the pot. Oh, that's just ribs, that's yeah, just backbone, isn't it? Yeah. Another three edibles, all small. The last of the four, and a little lobster and a few crabs. Oh, a little lively lobster. There's all sorts going on in this one. We've got some swimmers. Right. I'll let you show. That is a velvet swimming crab. You is. can tell. You can tell the difference. The reason they're called velvet swimmers is because they've got like a velvet texture on top. These back legs are a swimming leg. Got some. Put some lovely colours on them. Yeah, beady red eyes on them. Right. These, are, as you'll have heard, Paul saying, are edible crabs. Now they usually take one of two poses. They'll either have like a defensive pose, where they call themselves up like that, or they'll have an aggressive pose. So they'll either kind of hold themselves up, or it'll be like, oh, we? How are we? Right, that'll show you the difference as well between a male and a female. The males, 
underneath here, we've got a narrow V, whereas the females have got a wider pad. That's purely because the females hold the eggs underneath. Yeah. Right, these are way, way too slow. There we go, back into the zoo. And a little lobster. I'll get these crabs out of the way first and then we'll a lobster. They're so much stronger than anything else, aren't they, them edibles? When they get locked up into a pot, especially them homemade ones. Yeah, you've got to get out there. You need to be careful with them as well, because if you just rive them too hard, you just end up pulling all their legs off. Yeah. There's a little tiny one near your foot. Baby velvet swing crab. Is that a baby velvet? Aww. And, last but not least, is a little lobster. They're a bit of a mashed up crunching claw, aren't they? It was, yeah. Is, a, is it a he? No, it's a female. It's a she. A little girl. If we have a male, I can show you the difference, but like I was saying to you before, yeah. the female's tail at the back, cross section, is quite wide. But a male also, when you're looking at it underneath, a male up here on these bottom two legs have two white dots. Oh, he's a bit too small though. Nice, she. Colour, nice colour, but. Lovely blues. No two there. the same, is it? They're all yeah. like an individual fingerprint. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Just throw her back in. There we go. Little mermaid. And then Walt Potts just go back. Aye, all I'll do is I'll, I'll empty all these other ones. There's not more to see in these other no, ones. No, just brown crabs. Get all them out. Rebait them and then get more shot back. Right, okay. And then what, we'll try some for some others or? Hold the other fleet. Yeah, all right. Fresh bait catches crabs. Stinking bait catches lobsters. That's a good tip, that. Fresh bait catches crabs, stinking bait catches lobster, and I tell you what, that is going to catch lobster because that is stinking. It's salted, rotten mackerel, and I the smell is. People have said before, they were like, oh, I wish I could smell what you could smell in the video. You don't, don't want to, you don't want to be able to smell this rotten, salted mackerel, mate. I tell you what, it's a good job. What's that? You've got some on steering wheel. What's that? Is that salted back? I can't get any on me. It might be seaweed. Um, I tell you what, it's a good job I didn't have a skin full last night because that would have been me gipping of its side. <laughs> Just had one pint with my dinner, so I'm all right. I'm immune to it. I smelt worse. This is one of the crabs we've got out of the pot. Just talk to you about it real quickly. This is a female brown edible crab. Now you can tell the difference, like I showed you earlier on, between the males and the females because of this wide pad underneath here. The females, it's wider because that's where they hold their eggs. You can also tell by the cross section of the crab. The female, as you can see there, it's quite humped, yeah. whereas the male's almost flat. We were just talking here that there's different minimum landing sizes all over the country. Up in the northeast, where you're from, it's 130 millimetres across the back. That's the same for males and females. Right. Down here, it's two different sizes, one for males, one for females. For the females, it's 150 millimetres. For the males, it's 160 millimetres. And you measure that, I'll show you real quick. This one is size, but I'll explain why we're not going to take it. You measure from one side of there to there. Both the defensive pose. Yeah, like I was showing you okay. earlier on, protecting where's most vulnerable, isn't she? Come on. She's where it grabs out of my thumb as well. So you measure across the back there. This is 160, so this is big enough to take. The reason why we're not going to take it is because, as you can see, it's quite clean. It's got no keel worms on it, it's got no barnacles, and the undersides of here are quite pale. The claws are almost opaque. Because they've got a hard exoskeleton, when they're going to grow, they have to shed off their old hard shell and grow a new one. So they shed out of this hard shell, absorb, absorb a load of water, swell up, and then it hardens again. Now, even though this is, you can just... You can you just can, tell by looking at it, it just looks yeah. like... Yeah, Although it does, it's, it's hard, it's like, like al dente almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's still full of water. Because the, the muscles haven't had a chance to swell out and fill the shell again, it's so that ain't good eating? No. If you boiled it, you'd end up just, it'd be hollow, it'd be full of water. Yeah. So, yes. There you go then. Back she goes to toughen up. You 
good? Yeah, we're Enjoying right. yourself? We're right. <laughs> I'm alright there, yeah. Nice and comfortable. Should have brought a little flask. Got a cup of tea. And watch your work. I'm trying to get some of this seaweed up this road. Come on, dear. It's unbelievable how fast it grows. Well, that's not grown there. That's all grown on there since I put this out. Jesus. It's a clean rope. Careful when you're doing this as well, you don't get hooks. There's people fishing and getting their hooks caught in your rope. Yeah. You slide your hands down here and find a treble hook. Uh. Right, come on. Let's get a big, it's a big summer or other. Big dogfish. Bad them in, lots of Have you? And bullos. They're bigger, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Where? A small bullos and a big dogfish. Well, most of the right. The only way you'll be able to tell is when they get bigger. Like nasal flaps. Right. Like the thickness of the head. Yeah. If you get if you get one that's above five pound, it's a bullus. Right. Dogfish don't you when they get bigger. Have you ever eaten them? Have you? Any good? Quite meaty. Yeah. Depends how you're doing. People complain because they've got a bit of an ammonia taste to them. Yeah, that's what people say, yeah. But if you um if you skin them. Put them, bleed them and skin them, and then you freeze it. I freeze most of all fish. First. To make sure there's no parasites in it. Oh, is so that what? You get, you get worms in all fish, don't you? Right. It's just part of being wild. Even probably shop-bought fish will have worms in it at some point. But if you... It's why I was saying I never never advised people to eat anything raw. raw. Because it's how you end up with parasites. Okay. Yeah. As long as you cook it properly, or if you freeze it fully beforehand, anything that's been in there is... Well, because I'm always doing catch and cooks where I catch it and eat it straight away and that's... Yeah, but if you cook it, it's fine. Oh, yeah. I cooked it, hasn't I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. None of this sashimi lark. No, forget you that. You look like an itchy bum when you look worms in <laughs> Yeah, forget that now. Now, a big brown. Big brown cup. Looks, looks like a keeper. Is it? Maybe. Another female, I think. Uh, might be a male, I I can tell you from here it's a female lad because the top of it's rounded more. <laughs> I know. I thought you could just sense a female's presence. I do, yeah. I think she, she, I might have matched her with her on Tinder last night. <laughs> I cut that. We're in 48 feet of water. 48 feet? Jesus. That's some all in that, innit? Nice. That's about a 68. No, that's it. Swing and miss. Now. Now. These have only been soaking for. Since yesterday morning, no. All right, that's just a mullet head. It's... Three and number four. It's number... Oh! Still too small. I can see a little lobby. Oh. Big flapping around. That's big enough for me. Yeah, that's big enough, isn't it? There we go, look at yeah. oh, What's them in there, look? Ling heads. Absolute ling heads. Yeah. Let me check measure. Jeez, look at this. Ooh, bang on. Bang on. 91 mil. Well, if you can zoom in there and see it. You can't zoom in too much wide angle. There right. you are. She's legal. 91 millimetres. Legal tender. This one is a male. It's a lad. So like... It shows them white dots. If you can... Like if you can see it. Right. Just there. See by my finger? Yeah. Them two white dots. Females don't have them. Right. And also, these two little legs here, these top ones. Yeah. On a female, they're not big legs, they're like fans like this. Right. Okay. Female's got big fans all the way up because it's where it holds the eggs. Yeah. But yeah. This little lad, 
going with us. He's going with us for a, we're going to eat him, are we? With males, still minimum landing size, but also V notches. Yeah. Either this one or this one. Yeah. He's coming with us. Right, he's coming with us. We've got one. Woohoo! I will let you take care of him. And yeah, yeah look, this is. Take care you can see of there, look, there's the jawbone. Jesus. It's an old lingard. Oh, Stinky lingard. Look at teeth on her. Yeah. Decent, I don't know if one of them got to you, wouldn't you? I know. I think they're massive out as well. Well, we did have some nice ones up there on the wreck. It's a very red looking Why building. Why is it so red? Nice looking one. I think it's been living in a wreck or something, hasn't it? Yeah. Beautiful. Um, if I take care of it, what do you mean? You've got bands are out or just. <laughs> Just, just make sure it doesn't come down here in no. all these ropes. <laughs> okay. uh, you'll have noticed with some of the crabs and some of the other things that we'll show you, it's only got one claw. Now it's a hard life being a crab and a lobster. They're battling, well, battling every day of their lives, aren't they? Yeah. With the conditions, with, with other crabs and lobsters, with seals, with predator fish. Charming. What happened there? <laughs> Him steaming, even steaming past too close. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they grow their arms and legs back. All yeah. they'll do is the next time they shed their shell, like we're talking about with that edible crab, yeah. they'll just grow them back. And so they'll do the same, all crabs do the same, they'll all shed it, they'll all become, we call them peeler crabs sometimes yeah. up north and, and fishing. And Aye, they, they don't grow back the same size straight away, so if you've got one, if you ever find one, it's got one big claw and one little one. Well, Jeremy Beadle that yeah. hand, doesn't it? Jeremy. <laughs> it means it's lost one of them and it's in the process of growing it back. Right, okay. Sound. Hi, right, these um, these blue pots I made them myself. These are all made. Yep. These are John's special. So it's even more special when you've made it yourself. You've gone for all the graft of making it, and then. Well, not only that. Down here, is these are completely unique down here because this is a With... northeastern design. Yes, mate. This is the design that we use up in the northeast. That's what I'm used to. Velvet eagles. He's quite big with claws on him. Well, it's a male. It's a, ma it's a male, big yeah. claws. And a female. No, it's another male. Another male. Yeah, these two were getting quite cosy in there. A couple of uh, cosy males. Yeah, these are both undersized, but you can. And you can just tell I'll, that straight I'll, off I'll the deal, bat. I'll deal with him in a second. They can deal with these. Yeah, you, you can, can see with these straight away, these will be maybe about 130. Yeah. And he's got them uh, casts all over his legs, is that one? He's undersized. Undersized. But yeah, these these white worms that you can see on his legs. Oh, well, you can see them. We've got a couple up on his face as well. He's got some as well, they're called keel worms. Can you zoom in a little bit? Zoom in a bit. I've got them over there. Another commercial guy. Yeah, you can see the aggressive pose that he's pulling. Was in like a way then. Take yeah, it. let's have a go. Right, they've got much bigger claws for their body size, haven't they? Yeah, and that's where a lot of meat is. Back he goes. This one is slightly bigger. When you're getting them out of a pot like this, I'll try and show you. And they get old, get old at side and pot. You have to be careful with them because if you pull them too hard, you just pull all their arms and legs off. Yeah. So if you get older the claw, like get, actually get older the claw, and pull it. You see, you've got to roll that one on there. Yeah, he's got the right order that one. Yeah. There you go. That one probably is big enough. But up north, up, up my end, neck at woods, he'd have been a, he'd have been in pot. What is he? <laughs> 156. 156. So four millimetres undersized. Four mil, but it's, it's four mil under, so he's got to go back. There's another one. Play by the rules. Trying. So strong. They are hellishly strong. Yeah. Absolute beast of a thing, yes. aren't they? Beast thing. Ready for battle now, isn't yeah. it? Beast. Who'd win in a fight between that and the lobster? Uh, well, it depends which one gets older what. Yeah. I've put, I've put a crab and a lobster in a bucket before and thought oh, I'll be fine. And turn me back and just do it like. <laughs> it was the crab that killed the lobster. Right. But there you go. I've seen them before as well, where they've been in a pot together. There's a load of dead crabs and one big angry lobster. Yeah. They... <laughs> so just. Day, 
another very clean female. Very clean, look at you. You see like with that one before, either of both of those males, all them worms, this one has got nothing on it. No weed, no marks. And the claws, as you can see down here, like in the, the top part, they're almost opaque. Yeah. She's just peeled recently. Full of water. Yeah, and look Actually. at the size difference of the claws. The body's bigger, claws are smaller. Not what we want. No. Boom. That is that. There we I'll go. get these rebated and shot back. In a wanna. In a wanna. Well done. Good luck to them pots. Every now and again, when you're bringing the pots up, you get little sea creatures that are living in the pots or living on the rope and things like that. And this little guy here, I don't know how close you can see it, but I spotted it on the deck, and I said, I said, I think that's a Montague sea snail. Uh, sorry, a Montague sea slug. I just couldn't be sure. I mean, look at it, it just looks like a little piece of seaweed, but they have got a sucker underneath them. When he wakes up, I'll tell you what, I'll give him a second. There he is, man, he's a bit, he's a bit tired. <laughs> Where part of the defence mechanism are for these little ones Stacked like seaweed. is just, just lay there, like a Cornish sucker as well. We'll find some of them in a rock pool later on. And so what is he, just, he's just like a little... They'll only ever grow, like maximum size, which size your thumb. Right. right, Montague sea snail. A Montague sea snail. Yeah, even though it's a fish. Even though it's a fish. There you go, every day's a school day. We will try and find you a nice Cornish sucker later on. <laughs> this holiday's just getting better and better. <laughs> Stop for a little flick near this pier. Where John says there's oftentimes bass. Right in there, that's got to get him out. He's quite in the shallows there. We're on, fish on. Fish on. Not very big, but tip at rod. <laughs> Can be deceptive. Can be deceptive. I don't think it is going to be a big and right fish. He's, uh, he's been a bit ambitious, hasn't he, little bass? Oh, walk up a bit. I can see a bit of colour. Wow, oh, there he is. That's on. The battery's gone. Is it an easy one to get off? Yes, and that'll be above legal size, I would have said. We reckon 42. There we go. Bass on. On a little candy king. A little candy king. Look at him. Oh, easy to get off as well. This will show you it's 42 centimetres minimum landing size for a bass. Just like that looks like. I think we're. Calm down. Whoa. Oh, it's under, isn't it? Yeah, 40 centimetres. 40. We was going to go back anyway. Just to show you how big a minimum landing size bass was, that was all that was for. Boom, straight away. Lovely stuff. That was uh, as soon as the lure hit the water there. This can't be a big one. Hit it right side.
just seen you, haven't we? Another little bass, is it the same lad? People who aren't used to handling bass, you do have to be careful. Of what? Because they are covered in spikes. I got cut yesterday, I think, on his gill plate. Yeah, they have one big spike there, look, just where my fingernail is. And each one of these is a spike. So how would you, if I, if I was spear fishing, so how would I carry it, or how would someone who's well, new carry it? the spikes, it? if you push them that way, they stand up. If you go like that, look, it squash yeah. down. So if you're gonna get rolled a bit, get rolled a bit by its head. Yeah. Get rolled a bit like that. But these, these spikes on the back of here, and these have got a spike on there. Now look, that's one that gets you as well. Right, okay. So basically, if you come from the front and go back over, it. or in its mouth, it ain't got teeth that it can do you with, is it? No, really, it's got a little tiny one. You can feel there. Look, it's just like sandpaper, ah, yeah, just like coarse grit sandpaper. Yeah. Lovely little specimen. Back she goes. Straight off. Nice. Yeah, the, the spikes on the side of their gills. It's like I was explaining to you earlier about getting like a double bite. What they do is they'll come in and, and jab like a bait fish, like a mackerel or something. So sometimes you'll find that when you've got like a lure, you'll find you get a bite and then it comes back and get it. So what it does is it runs around and jabs it and then comes round again and gets it. So sometimes when you're fishing with Trevor looks, you'll foul look on its side at face. Because they, just they come, up, come up and bat it and it'll hook up. There you go. <laughs> and uh, also... Oh. For anyone who's watching, if you just, you know, if you want a little bit of fun, especially on this video, if you want to flick the subtitles on and just see what it's making of these accents, <laughs> that might be a little fun game for you to play. You can do that now. The world. Look how flat it is down there. That's a madness, sir. Look at that. That's vast. That's absolutely mental. That's like, you can put me in it to get the scale. Look at the absolute size of that. Some money in there, like, in there. Vast yachts, but we're happy. We're happy in this little vessel. We're working class lads. Now, for anybody that's interested, that yacht belongs to the Qatari royal family. And it was 300 million. 300 million pound yacht. And there's the Qatari family there, look, yeah. There's a speedboat in there. It's definitely got a helipad on there. I think the uh, the lord of the Qatar, or the king of Qatar, is a subscriber to both me and John, so. Yeah, we're, like, we're like that, that's <laughs> me on top. Yeah, he'll be a bit starstruck if he sees us lads out here now. He's asking me earlier for, a, for an autograph and I just told him that I'm mean, he, he, he asked me if I keep, could get one of my patches and stickers. I said, no, I mean. Yeah, I'm going out for lobster pots. Don't you worry, we're off out potting. There we are, back on terra firma. After a lovely morning out, getting shown how he does it. Out on the boat, out on the good ship. Lollipop. The good ship Lollipop, McFerrell Fisheries. And, uh, and yeah, thanks to John from the Fish Locker for taking me out. Check his channel out, I'll leave a link below. If you don't follow him, please go and have a look. If you're into fishing at all, you'd be a fool not to. Because he knows his onions, does this lad. Uh, yeah, what an amazing morning. And I'll catch you on the next one. See you. Say bye, John, please. Bye. See you later. See you later. Right, light's not over clever on this, but... Um, I've come down to the beach, it's getting dark, it's past nine o'clock, but I've got my lobster from, uh, from John's boat and I'm just going to cook it up with my gas stove on Billy Can and just have it just as it gets dark on this beach. <laughs> Let's get it rustled up. I'm losing my light, so sorry about that. <laughs> I might be able to bring you in. I've got my head torch anyway, so I might be able to do a little shot with to show you me eating it, but 
I'm just happy to be out here, man, and I've had such a good day. Such a good day with uh, with John on his boat. I mean, it helps that we're both Whitby lads. No nonsense, straight out line. He's a genuine lad. That's what I like. And he's genuinely giving me this lobster, so... <laughs> I'm going to do it justice and eat it here, looking over at the sea, and then I'll maybe even go and dunk my junk, but it'll probably be, uh, probably too, blah, 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 blah. it'll probably be, it'll probably be too dark to film that. I've totally lost my light, so this is all going to be a bit, a bit mad. Look at that, bad boy. Nighttime lobster. That's how we're dancing now. That's how we're rolling. Don't get on your feet. There it is, look. Nighttime. <laughs> there you go. Nighttime lobster. And I can't even. What do I have to crack it with? An out. Look at all that meat. Look at all that meat, man. Tail meat. I'm gonna get stuck in. Mm. Here I am, just for one, a couple of bites. <laughs> mm. Oh, mate. Mm. I don't need out on it. If you're watching, John, Beautiful, thank you. Worth all hard work, thanks mate. Mm. I'm signing off. I'm getting out camera covering lobster juice. <laughs> ah, beautiful evening as well. Right. Mm. Thanks again John, Fish Locker. Link below, go follow him, he's an absolute legend. Um, Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.